Hello Unigame fans, it is already July and while June felt really busy with the showcases and sales, there were a smaller than usual number of new releases, but I did miss some key 1.0 releases, updates and an older title or two, so I'm making up for that right now. Let's begin with OMFG 1 Million Fatal Guns, a pretty cleverly named roguelite first person shooter where this did release way back in January 2021. This is a completely free title that I believe comes to us from a student team from DigiPen, but the quality of the action and the sheer variety of procedurally generated guns is impressive. We also have the 1.0 release of Good Company, a management sim where you're building up a tech corporation making physical products, having to grow from a humble workshop to a massive automated production plant. It did spend quite some time in early access and is finally out, but I would recommend this if you love tycoon or management games, especially titles like Little Big Workshop, to unleash your inner Steve Jobs with this. This video is brought to you by Beasties, a match 3 RPG which is a genre of games that I really love, adding in monster taming elements so of course it is my gem. The world of Beasties was at peace until the disappearance of the Beastie Master, so you are sent to a remote village to find out what happened. The match 3 combat with a variety of elemental abilities is a tried and true mechanic, but add to that evolvable creatures and you got my attention. In addition, there are resource gathering and crafting elements, not to mention freeform exploration so it looks neat, but the developers make a special point for players not to expect hundreds of different types of monsters, being a more contained experience. It is releasing exclusively on Switch today, with a Steam release in a couple of weeks, where I do think that this style of game works well on a handheld, so pick it up there or wish this the Steam version right now. An adorable looking card game is Little Inner Monsters, one that quite literally gives form to your personal emotions, manifesting them as these cute monsters. It is a card game that you can play against AI or with a friend, but it looks shallow in terms of gameplay with it simply being the comparison of card stats, but the art does look pretty good. On the surface, Never Grind Online does look like some sort of mobile cash grab, but there's more to this game than meets the eye. It is a first-person, party-based dungeon-crawling RPG that was very popular in the 90s, with the twist here being that combat is in real-time and that there are MMO elements, although you can also play this without having to interact with other players.
I've seen parallels being drawn to EverQuest, where personally, I see some early browser-based games DNA in this as well, looking like a real throwback which is of interest. The Sock Pop Collective train continues to chug along with White Lavender, a third-person action-adventure RPG where you play as a bug having to fight other creatures with swords and magic, all on a journey to brew a special blend of tea. It does have their signature art style which is always interesting to see, but it does seem to have souls-like elements as well, making this of interest. I just talked about Source of Madness when covering the Hidden Gems of May, where this title released out of early access back then, but the developers are not slowing down with this free update named Insanity. Along with the balancing changes and bug fixes, this adds two new higher difficulty modes and a new monster enemy class making this game even better. It is the end of an era with Legend of Keepers Soul Smugglers, the last planned DLC for the excellent roguelike RPG that I like to describe as Reverse Darkest Dungeon, adding a new dungeon master named the Skeleton Lord, more missions, mechanics, monsters, traps, artifacts and more, being a fitting send-off for this title, where I'm looking forward to the next game in the very similar looking Sandwalkers. The most successful game by Mao on this list is Raft, another first-person survival game which has an astonishing 157,000 Steam reviews which by rule of thumb estimation translates to something like 6 million copies sold so it's no wonder why you see so many indie developers still trying to make games in this genre in hopes of striking the lottery. The 1.0 release came with the final chapter update which added new locations and biomes, an overhaul of the story, new enemies, NPCs, buildings, items and more. I still remember this game when it first launched where it was very primitive and crude looking which is nothing at all like the game we have today where a small experience about surviving on a raft and fighting off sharks has turned into so much more. Most notably, the exploration and on-land portion of the games are great, even having futuristic cities and robots which I did not expect at all, so this will go down in history as one of the best in the genre. I 
I do want to give a very special mention to the Steam release of Mercenaries Rebirth Call of the Wild Links, a tactical RPG title that is the latest in this series, having first released on PS4 and Switch and suddenly released yesterday out of the blue. If you have not played this, this is a solid franchise with good combat, with a story in this iteration being quite a classic tale of political intrigue, where the king has died, his concubine seizing power, and we follow the story of a princess fleeing for her life. I love the pixel art in this, as well as the isometric tactical combat, even having a job class system that is varied. While not entirely revolutionary, I do think that it will be of interest to fans of the genre taking the number one spot. For more tactics titles, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.